believe anyone found this to be a profitable exercise. Clearly it did not remain so. The miners who once operated this eventually found safer work. If you have the time, I wish to speak to you. What did you need?
don't appreciate it. I doubt you came all this way just to do me a favor. Now you want to explain to me why you're going around harassing the various old men by wiping away their hard-earned debts? Adrian sent you. She's... did... did she look okay? A Terramorph. She's fortunate to be alive at all. Hope you two had plenty of backup. So what's this she had you bring all the way down here after putting you in harm's way? Terramorph attack, huh? Not exactly sure why you'd be bringing that... Wait, Tau Gourmet? Like, Tau Seti Tau Gourmet? That's a joke, right? There's no settlement old enough on Tau Seti to have a Terramorph. Either someone's setting up the worst petting zoo in the universe, or... If she made you come all the way for this... Let's get inside. I need to see these cells. If you are free soon, could we talk? I'm gonna ask you to not touch anything. Got some projects in the works down here. I wasn't expecting guests. Oh, and Lou mentioned how you took care of the debt. Can't say I'm thrilled the Trade Authority got their mitts on the research, but I guess that's the price you pay not to live in a cave the rest of your days. All queued up. Let's gaze into this abyss, shall we? All right, just get those cellular markers tagged. Wait, where are the markers? This, this can't be right. This sample, it's Londinian. I'll, I'll need to get this all in the slate. Adrian really gave you this sample. You're not lying to me? Because if you told me this was a hoax, and it'd be the best damn fake I've ever seen. I'd be mad and very, very relieved. Can't just humor an old man, huh? This sample, it's got all the indicators of the worst Terramorph attack in human history. I presume you've heard of Londinian. It was. An entire city wiped off the map. The swarms are so bad, they had to blow the spaceport and seal the place off from the galaxy at large. Not a lot of samples made it off the world from the time of the attack. But the ones that did, well, they look just like this one. I didn't detect any of the telltale signatures this specimen ever sat on a ship while it was alive, either. I don't think it was transported to Talzetti. This specimen... It grew there, faster than any Terramorph should. Which means, if we're about to start a new era in human Terramorph relations, where big, sudden Londinian-style attacks can happen outside Londinian, that's not gonna end well for humanity. The chances for survival, let alone maintaining any kind of functioning society, would be slim indeed. So you lugged this bad omen all the way here. You want to tell me what your plans are for it now?
Because until now, the Terramorphs that wiped out Londinian had the good sense to stay put. What happened there? It was a tragedy, but at least it was contained. So to find evidence for a similar attack on a different world, well, we don't have enough information to know precisely what this means. But I doubt it's good. So I'd love to know what it is you're planning from here. The circle, huh? <sighs> Could use a drink about now. Here, faster we take the lift to the servants. Not supposed to use it, but given the circumstances, I'm inclined to just ask forgiveness. Let's get going.
have things I wish to discuss with you. When you have time. Just because the governor's office is right out there on the main You know, hassling yourself anymore, Major. Our friend here showed me your sample. Suffice it to say. Not here. Let's talk somewhere more private. Lou said we could use the back. Lou gave me the abridged version of what went down. I can't thank you enough for taking care of all that. Makes two of us. I hope it ultimately didn't end up being too much trouble. That's... well, that's certainly not what I was expecting you'd have to go through. But thank you. I'm just glad you both came through intact. So... Were you two able to get that workup together? Got it right here. That sample? It's an exact match for the ones from Londinian. Londinian? That's... That's exactly what I was afraid of. Not thrilled to be the bearer of that kind of news. That's for damn sure. So tell me you've got some kind of plan for that workup. Well, right now, we've got more questions than answers. So I've been trying to figure out what it's going to take to access our old Terramorph data. Good place to start. What'd you find? It's in the archives. The Armistice Archives? Doesn't that mean we'd be dealing with the Cabinet? And the Freestar Collective? And House Varun somehow? Guess we can kiss that approach goodbye. I didn't think the Cabinet would be willing to hear us out either. But I called in some favors. They've agreed to hear us out on two conditions. One, they want to see this analysis you two have procured. And two, they want to discuss what happened on Tau Ceti. With both of us. Well, when the colony war came to a close 19 years ago, with the signing of the Armistice, Three factions were involved in the negotiations. The UC, Freestar, and House Varun. They made a lot of decisions about what sort of tactics should and shouldn't be permitted in future conflicts. All information related to the things they decided should be banned was locked away in the archives. Now, it's possible to get things out of there, but only with the agreement of members from all three factions. And as to what our research is doing in there, well, I'll get to that. The Cabinet's the UC's highest governing body. The President, top military brass, scientific and diplomatic division heads. Any major decision the UC makes goes through them. They're the only real chance we've got of unlocking the archives. So without their blessing, we're flying blind. Of course. You deserve the full story. Percival and I, we're not just researchers. We were military scientists, ran a division of the UC together that deployed aliens on the battlefield as weapons. Place I was hiding out, that was our unit's home base. After some early fits and starts at other facilities, the place eventually became the heart of UC Xeno warfare. A practice that's been banned ever since the Armistice went into effect almost 20 years ago. And the UC military cut us loose for what we'd done. Well, 
Well, it was during that assignment that the UC asked us to explore deploying terramorphs on the battlefield. The project never got off the ground, but the data our team gathered is now sitting in the archives, along with all the other information banned after the Colony War. Under the watchful eye of monitors from all the galactic factions still participating in regular politics. But if we can convince the Cabinet to help us access that data, it'll give us the tools we need to decipher what exactly this sample might mean. And hopefully, how to prevent more attacks like the one that spawned it. Because the Terramorph project was doomed from the start. Terramorphs are too mean, too smart, too hungry to be used in combat. Trust us, we tried. The data that's in the archives, it's historical write-ups, anatomical notation, food chain analyses. I doubt they would have even classified it if it didn't have a Xeno Warfare logo on it. You have my word, it's not a threat. I mean, I hope they will, given the evidence we've acquired. But getting the Freestar Collective and House Varun on our side, that won't be easy. Since neither group is exactly on great terms with the UC at the moment, for various reasons. Exactly. It's going to mean negotiations and deals and plenty of diplomatic legwork to see this through. But I don't see a better option to solving what's going on here. So, it's gonna be up to us to get them on board. That's all I'm asking. Thank you. Now I need to get this work up in the Cabinet's hands. Once that's done, I'll meet you out front of Mast in New Atlantis. Good luck. You two are gonna need it. Yes. You should give that recipe a whirl. Uh, Percival's research tends to be pretty sound. And probably less than a 10% chance you go blind. Always nice to kick back into Broken Spear after a long day. How's it going? Can I help you? Cool. That's what we do here. Sounds like a plan. I can also take stuff off your hands, too, if that's something you're interested in.
Yo, stay good out there. Be advised to secure loose articles and find stable ground or remain seated in the event of unforeseen tremor. Insertion complete. You may now move freely about the cabin. Captain, over here. The workup's in the cabinet's hands. They said they'll call for us once they've gotten to properly review it. But listen, I know I should have been more forthcoming about who I was earlier. So, in the interest of full disclosure, there's one more thing you ought to know before we head up there. My relationship with the UC. It's... ...more complicated than it might seem at first glance. The UC's actually the only reason I'm here in the first place. I... ...am a clone... ...of a man named Francois Sanon. One-time Fleet Admiral of the UC during the Colony War. Former head of the UC Navy. They called him Ve Victus. Woe to the defeated... ...in Old Earth Latin. ...a title he earned. The program I was a part of, it was... ...the UC's attempt to create a new generation of military minds... ...from one of their most respected tacticians. Secure the leadership of the UC military for generations to come. A non-trivial amount of gene editing. Clone, honestly, isn't even really the right term for our relationship... ...thanks to the amount of donor material that was required to bring me into this world. He and I are different on more than a few levels. But... ...there's no denying the fact we're inextricably linked.
I'm the last. A few of my siblings they passed when we were young. Training accidents and the like. But most of the rest were deployed to the front lines during the colony war. And they never came back. Not a day goes by where I don't think about what the world would look like with them still in it. He would have happily told you he was one of the greats. Ultimately, though, it didn't matter. The man I was cloned from, my father, was executed for acts he committed during the war. The man caused a lot of death on both sides. Freestar Collective and UC. Military and civilians. And the things he did, well, they're a part of the reason the UC and Freestar Collective aren't really on great terms to this day. So my involvement, it could be another obstacle they throw at us up there. I just wanted you to be forewarned. He had his men open fire on civilian ships during the Battle of Cheyenne. A battle that he ultimately ended up losing anyway, devastating the UC fleet and bringing the colony war to an ugly end for the UC. But he's also the one who ordered the bombing of the Londinian spaceport during their outbreak, condemning countless lives. Both sides agreed the settled systems would be better without him. My areas of expertise are pretty specific, but messed up families are up there. You know, while we've got a second, was there anything else we needed to discuss? I know you got dropped into the middle of this pretty fast. Or if you've got any last minute business to attend to, now might be a good time. No telling how long the cabinet's gonna keep us waiting out here. That's actually a souvenir from my time on Mars. The Red Devils unit I was a part of, they were founded by recruits who'd worked some of Mars' deepest mines. Folks used to adversity. The dust at those depths, it seeps into everything. The human eye included. Where the name Red Devils came from in the first place. It became an unwritten rite of passage that anyone wanting to enlist with the Devils had to do a stint in the mine before they could join up. The devils were always talked about in such revered tones during my training, so as soon as I was old enough, I signed up, and the eyes were my parting gift. I strain from the amount of reading I've got on the horizon if we succeed. The Terramore project never went anywhere. It couldn't. They are deadly creatures, but they aren't Xenoweapons. The Cabinet not opening the archives is probably a bigger risk than them handing over the files. That data itself isn't dangerous. Which probably wouldn't be a bad point for us to bring up, should the opportunity arise. I mean, we never spent a lot of time together. He was too busy being fleet admiral to deal with kids. I was raised by a pair of guardians instead. Until his defeat during the colony war, though, he was known as an extremely effective commander. Savvy, perceptive. That mind opened a lot of doors for him. And for me, too. But Ve Victus, for all his ability, was heartless. Ruthless to a fault. In the end, that's what cost him his life. Well, thinking about it more, I suspect there'd be value in sharing the fact that the Terramorph project was, well, a failure. There's no need to be afraid of this data being weaponized. Knowing that should calm some of the Cabinet's fears and make it easier for us to dispel any suspicions the other factions might have about our intentions.
Then I guess it's just a matter of... The cabinet meeting is about to begin. All parties, please proceed to the cabinet chambers. Sounds like our cue. Here we go. Ah, welcome. You must be the captain Hadrian mentioned in her report. You have our thanks for the risks you faced in securing this information. Well, I'll be sure your commanding officer hears that you've done them satisfactorily. Now then, we have two petitioners here making a... Surprising request. Access to the UC Xeno Warfare team's Terramorph data, currently housed in the Armistice archives. A request which will require not just this body's agreement, but that of all three Armistice signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, Captain, we've all read Hadrian's report on the subject, but we have yet to hear from you. Perhaps you could summarize for the Cabinet what it is you see as the goal of this endeavor. That's quite the leap, Captain. Madam President, I object to the very premise of this meeting. While no one would argue that what happened on Tau Ceti was anything less than a tragedy, Terramorph attacks are not some sudden new threat on the horizon. They've been happening for generations. To demand, we hand over banned archival knowledge and possibly upset the balance of galactic diplomacy because of a single attack seems at best panic. And at worst, a power grab by the daughter of a bloodthirsty warmonger and her associates. I would remind the Chief Diplomat who he's speaking to. If it's my father you're looking to address, you're welcome to consult a medium. I would also ask, how many deaths the Cabinet requires to act? Fifty? Fifty thousand? Because if tragedies like Tau Ceti are just prelude to more attacks, I have no doubt you'll get the body count you require. Let's keep this civil, shall we? And while there should be no doubt, the preservation of life stands paramount among this body's duties. Chief Yassine has a point. Will a single attack, however troubling, be sufficient to convince the other factions to grant us access to what they no doubt consider weapon data? I don't think it's enough. Perhaps you can help, Captain. As the one who actually collected the sample in question, did this terramorph seem at all alarming to you? I can second, Madam President. What I saw from the report reinforces the idea that this was an anomalous spawning. The other factions are as at risk as we are. Huh. A fine point, Dr. Kulkarni. So then, Captain, given the discussion now and the information you've been privy to thus far, if you were in our position, would you grant the request made to open the archives?
whatever risks exist, they are outweighed by this imminent threat. I agree. The request should be granted. I'm inclined to agree. As am I. Uh, I suppose that does get to the heart of the point, doesn't it? Very well. I consent. The galaxy was lucky you were here today, Captain. You and I are in agreement, Chief Diplomat. So, if there are no other objections, I believe we can agree to give our full backing to make the request to... <gasps> what was that? Attention. Attention. If you are free soon, An incident has we talk? Incident. Chief Sarkin, what's happening? There's been an attack at the spaceport. Terramorphs. Terramorphs? More attacks. Just as predicted. Good God. There... There must be another explanation. The, the creatures evaded our scanner somehow. There will be plenty of time for conjecture later. Chief Sarkin, Order the evacuation of the spaceport and have your men contain the things, but do it discreetly. The last thing we need is a citywide panic. Yes, ma'am. Admiral Logan, the local barracks can provide support? I'll make the order myself. Nearest anti-Xeno squad, though, is off-world. Going to take a while to bring them in. Well then, we'll have to make do with the tools we've got. You too. We can't risk those things getting out of the spaceport. I want you both on the next train there. We'll let them know you're coming, and that you've dealt with these things before. Now go show them how it's done. We're on it, ma'am. Captain, I'm right behind you. Let's get down there. We've got our orders. Let's move. Other way for it to end. got here when you did. I... I just wish it hadn't come to that. Yeah, what the hell happened back there, Captain? There's no excuse for using lethal force here. <laughs> this isn't a joke. We're preventing casualties, not causing them. So get your head in the game. Understand? Now, officer... The way those people were acting, I've seen this before. They were under the Terramorph's influence, weren't they? I... I don't know. They were down at the port, and they just started... screaming. We would tried to restrain them, get them on the train to get them out of harm's way, but... But some of the other officers down there... 
We couldn't restrain them fast enough. They just started firing on us. People we knew. They went berserk. Fermonic projection. Some terramorphs, they can induce this fog. It affects everyone differently, but some people just lose control, turn against everyone around them, even if they don't want to. They're like a puppet. You kill the morph, you break the hold. But this means we're gonna need to be real careful with our fire and keep that EM weapon at the ready. I'm not suggesting. It's documented behavior. The result of the projection, though, can vary wildly. Some folks just shrug it off. Others hallucinate. And some lose control altogether. They'll lash out at anyone around them. But still, be aware while they're doing it. Those cases, you'll either need to knock them out with EM fire, or free them by killing the Terramorph. I honestly was just wondering the same thing. But no, you don't need to worry about me. I've had a Terramorph try it on me before. I'm not susceptible. So we'll just have to make sure to watch out for each other down there. Well, you better keep that EM weapon loaded then. Now let's move. Matt's unlocked. Please, do what you can to help them. Did you hear something? God, no time to waste, Captain. Stash the EM and close the firepower. Let's move! For the spaceport district. All citizens are required to proceed to the nearest shelter. You might back up. Don't just stand there. Good! Wait, 
Officer? Are you and this woman experts? Take whatever we can get right now. We've got the remaining creatures locked down on the landing pad, but we're barely holding our perimeter. They said you've done this before, huh? Well, one fire team to spare and whatever supplies you need, but I, I can't risk them taking over any more of my men. Put those things down and do it fast. We will hold them as best we can. Heard you might be looking for some backup. You say the word, we're out there on your six. You two have any experience with Terramorphs before? Only the brief they just gave on the way here. But we know how to handle pressure. Surviving a full-on mental assault isn't the same as keeping your cool in a firefight. Might make you more liability than asset. We're not UC security. You don't need to worry about us. We're not afraid, but we'll stay here and hold the line if that's what you want. You're the experts. Roger that. We're on you. Anyone nosing around here is gonna have a death wish. Always worth checking. I don't know what you might find in their pockets. <sighs> Guess they weren't kidding about you two. The universe put the right people in the right place.
certainly doesn't feel like it. I don't want to think what would have happened if you two hadn't been here. Just glad we could rise to the occasion. Captain, we should report back to the President. Let her know the Terramorphs have been dealt with. Take care of yourself, Sergeant. Thank you, gentlemen. Let your people all know how much we owe them today. Yes, ma'am. Ah, there you are. I believe we have some things we should discuss. You've got the Cabinet's full backing to prevent more attacks. Understand? Losing anyone in the line of duty is a tragedy. These attacks, they can't happen again. The things we do Captain? here, the tech we develop, Hadrian, benefits all of humanity. It would appear that the Cabinet owes you our thanks for what you did for the city today. As well as an apology. Your concerns about the Terramorphs, well, consider them validated. Thank you, ma'am. Of course. I only wish we could have acted sooner. Now, today's events have only clarified our path forward in the eyes of the Cabinet. You will have our full support in collecting the Terramorph data from the Archives, as well as a subsequent investigation into the nature of these attacks. But to accomplish those goals, we're going to need the right people in the right places. As such, the Cabinet has authorized me to reinstate you, Hadrian effective immediately to your former rank of major. As soon as we've got the data in hand, we want you investigating these attacks and how to stop them. Will you do this? I... Y yes Yes, ma'am. I'd be honored. Excellent. But as you've both made clear, for such an investigation to succeed first, we're going to need someone to convince the Free Star Collective and House Varun to play ball. Someone who knows precisely the sorts of dangers the colonies and all the galaxy are facing right now. The Cabinet wants you, Captain, to be that representative. The Cabinet wants progress and wants it quickly. You're already far more familiar with the situation than any diplomat would be. There's also no diplomat alive that can claim they helped keep a cadre of terramorphs off the embassy doorsteps. The cabinet was unanimous. They want you. The very next item on my list, an exchange we're willing to fast-track your citizenship upon collection of the data. So, will you help us? It has its perks. Only citizens can purchase property in the city. We also pay reduced prices on most goods and services across the UC. There's also a credit disbursement when you first join. Help get you on your feet. But above all, 
you'd become a dedicated part of the greatest faction in the galaxy. If you're willing to help us, we can open that door. I'm glad to hear it. Now, we, of course, won't be sending you in without the proper support. Deputy McIntyre in the Office of Interstellar Affairs will be your guide on gaining access to the archives. You should be able to find her in her office across the hall. And on behalf of the whole of the United Colonies, you have our thanks. We are dismissed. Yes. There are I'm so gonna go many check in with Chief Engineer Cool Systems. It's hard Start to keep up with all the work they're doing. That data. Dealing with ambassadors? I think I'd rather fight more terramorphs. By the way, Captain, Sergeant Yumi was looking for you. Sounds like he's got more work. Okay. Hello. Chief Yassin, these orders a Vanguard Captain. You... Yes, sir. I'll make sure they get what they require. That must make you my vanguard captain. Welcome to Interstellar Affairs. I'm Deputy Chief Diplomat McIntyre, Chief Yassin's second in command. I heard you were instrumental in protecting the city from the attack. You have my gratitude. I was also informed that you gave quite the presentation to the cabinet. Chief Yassin wants you to know the Interstellar Affairs Office is fully committed to this endeavor, accessing the Terramorph data and beyond. We're going to do everything in our power to make sure you have the tools you need. And that means first getting you into the Archives. You do know what the Archives are, correct? Hmm. Someone paid attention in current events. So, then you also know that it was originally managed by the three major galactic players. Access to the Archives is only granted in cases of dire emergency, and requires a one-time use code from each of the three Armistice Signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, the UC is already on board, so that means we'll need to convince two people, the Ambassadors of the Freestar Collective and House Varun, to hand over their codes. Get them both, and you'll have your data. But that's a lot easier said than done. No. Each is a strip of several million random numbers generated on the fly based on biometric keys kept by each of the ambassadors on their person at all times. They're impossible to create without those keys, and those keys stay with the ambassadors. Meaning, we're accessing nothing if we can't get them on our side. I couldn't agree more. However... Both ambassadors have reasons they won't, or can't, work with us. Now, I'll provide guidance on how we believe you can acquire each code, but ultimately, it'll be up to you to get them both to cooperate. And I do mean cooperate. Threats and violence are off the table here. Though that doesn't mean we can't get creative. But it does mean we need to get you up to speed on who you're dealing with. Who do you want to start with? Ambassador Radcliffe of Freestar? or Ambassador Balmore of House Varun. Ambassador Balmore's a challenge. When the rest of House Varun retreated into seclusion shortly after the signing of the armistice, Balmore stayed here. 
He's since lent his support to a small number of archival requests. So there's real hope he might again. Though claiming to know how a member of House Varun thinks is a quick way to earn yourself a psych eval. Well, these days, they're primarily considered a security threat. House Varun Zealots, a fundamentalist outshoot of the group that stayed behind when the rest retreated into seclusion, want nothing more than to send everyone not dedicated to their cause to the Great Serpent in the Sky. But that hasn't always been the case. After they ended the Serpent's Crusade about 70 years back, House Varun did take a real run at trying to normalize relations with the rest of the galaxy. It's why they have an embassy here in the first place, why they were included in the armistice negotiations. But then, without warning, they left, leaving behind, to our knowledge, just the ambassador and his duty under the armistice. The Zealots do not represent House Barun. I am sure there are many within their society who value the same things we do. Of course. But there is... another wrinkle. We're not 100% sure Balmor is actually still alive. His public appearances were always rare. But it's been several years now since he last poked his head out. Scans of the facility show life signs, but not the kind we were expecting. Your task is to find him and kindly but firmly remind him of his duties under the armistice. The Varun delegation brought more than a few of their native flora with them when they set up in the embassy. It seems those plants have been allowed to flourish, making it hard for us to verify what's flora and what's ambassador. The embassy is still legally House Varun's sovereign territory, so we're not technically permitted inside. We've snuck in the occasional spy, of course, but the ambassador has proven more evasive than you'd expect for a man of his age but we're quite sure he hasn't left the city the man stands out it would at least be a speedier negotiation but i of course hope the ambassador is alive and well now the embassy front door isn't an option but our spies have stated there's a side entrance that should allow you access here this device should get you all the way down to the embassy interior. Once you're inside, though, finding the ambassador is going to be up to you. And fair warning, we received a report that alarms might have been tripped inside the embassy during the attacks. Watch out for automated security in there. Ah, the good Ambassador Radcliffe. She's a veteran of the Colony War. And her only goal in life is to make ours miserable. Hmm. It sounds as though I will enjoy this. Now, officially, our office is suggesting you try and negotiate with her. Use your experiences as a member of the military and with the threat we're facing to convince her to lend her support. And who knows? Maybe that'll work. Stranger things have happened. But my suspicion is we're going to have to rely on other tools to get her code. Certainly. See, good diplomacy is all about the careful application of pressure. We just need to find the squeeze. UC Intelligence has a recording device planted in the ambassador's living quarters, which we suspect you can use to your advantage. But getting caught trespassing is a quick way to land yourself in an embassy holding cell. So, if you are going to try and access the device, you're going to need to find a way in there without being seen. Now, we recovered some intel we believe should be able to help with that. 
But there's also a disgruntled staff member you might be able to pump for information. Maybe even convinced to work with you. Name's Cameron Long. He's younger than Ratcliffe, bears less of a grudge towards the UC. He works closely with the Ambassador, making him a promising source for information on the ins and outs of Embassy life, and someone who very likely hates her guts. Yes, many. Don't steal anything. Don't get caught anywhere you're not supposed to. Absolutely do not harm anyone. If something goes wrong, we'll do our best to smooth things over. But I can't make any promises. All right. Here, your diplomatic ID. I'll give them a heads up. You're on your way. Not likely to let you through the door otherwise. And take these. Chief Yassin wanted you to have some options on how to proceed in there. Now, if you have additional questions or require clearance for a new approach we haven't already discussed, don't hesitate to ask. I'd suggest you start with Ambassador Radcliffe. Approach her while the attack is still fresh in her and her staff's mind. Be smart out there, Captain. I have things I wish to discuss with you when you have time. Ah, if it isn't my favorite part-time security officer. Crime has slowed down since you started helping out, which is good for morale. The whole department is in the process of recovering, myself included. If I'm being honest, I still have nightmares of my team turning on one another. Things can be replaced and wounds can be healed, but building back that trust in each other is going to take time. Luckily, we've built a good culture here and we hired some new recruits who were inspired by what you did. I've got faith we'll survive this. Yep, something just came in. Scuffle over at the Dawn's Roost. Security on site handled it, but now one of them is saying the other guy stole his wedding ring. Problem is, he left without identifying the perp, so I need you to talk to Royce Elgin at the Dawn's Roost. See if you can fill in the gaps.
Men like him aren't very generous with their time. They want you to solve a case without ever having to lift a finger themselves. Not that he'd be much of a witness, given that he was still half drunk when he got here and somehow even more so when he left. Sorry, wrong word. Rich people don't get drunk, they get inebriated. Which is another way of saying highly unreliable. Thank you, Captain. Always appreciate it when you lend a hand. Let me know when the matter's resolved. A restaurant over in the residential district caters to a very fancy clientele. It's the kind of place where forks come in different sizes, depending on the food. According to the patron, the ring is valuable, but if I had to guess, not for sentimental reasons. Normally, when someone loses a valuable keepsake, they're heartbroken. The way this guy was acting, it's almost as if he lost a wallet full of creds. See you later. Dr. Royce at the Dawn's Roost. Servers have good memories by trade. You'll remember the pub. Uh, it's a lot of work, as always. People like to say, New Atlantis is the safest city in the settled systems. How hard could your job be? Well, safety doesn't happen by accident. It takes a lot of work and a lot of people. See you later, Captain. What can I do for you? 